There's something that happened in the Bible 3,400 years ago that actually showed what would happen 1,400 years in the future. And you know, what happened then can actually change our life today? Really. These people were called the Israelites. They were God's special people. He had chosen them and he was taking care of them. Like, a lot. They used to be in slavery, but God freed them. And when they were traveling across the desert, he actually gave them water. And when they had no food, he fed them with bread from heaven called manna. In fact, he even kept their clothes and shoes from wearing out. And God was leading them to a special land that God had promised to them. And they even made it to that promised land, but the people decided that they didn't trust God enough to go into it. God had done so much for them and even promised to fight their enemies in the land like he had done before, but the people didn't believe. So instead, now they were wandering the wilderness, but God was still caring for them. In fact, when some of their enemies came and attacked Israel, God helped them defeat them. God was doing so much for them, but guess what Israel did? They got impatient and started complaining. Can you believe it? Wait. Before we say that the Israelites were terrible people for complaining when God was taking care of them, do you ever complain? Do you ever complain about maybe your parents? They take care of you and do a lot for you. What about complaining about your life? If you're God's child, he's taking care of you too. In 1 Peter 5, 7, it tells us, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. So we do the same thing as the Israelites. Instead, we should be thankful to the people who are taking care of us, like God and our parents. The Bible also says in Philippians 2.14, do all things without grumbling or disputing. And if you're God's child, he has given you the power through his spirit to do just that. God has done so much for us. We shouldn't be complaining. And God also did a lot for the Israelites too. And the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there's no food and no water and we loathe this worthless food. Instead of being thankful for how God had taken care of them, they were complaining. So God sent snakes against the people of Israel and the snakes were biting people and these were called fiery serpents, probably because the venom would make you feel like you're burning inside. And many of the people died after getting bit by the snakes. Then the people came to Moses and said, we have sinned for we have spoken against the Lord and you. Pray to the Lord that he will take away the serpents from us. The people recognize their sin, but have you? Sin is disobeying God. Whether that is complaining or doing other things that God says not to do, we've all sinned. In 1 John 1.8, it says, If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. See, the truth is that we've all disobeyed God and done wrong things. And like the people of Israel recognize that they had sinned, we also need to recognize that we've sinned too. And that means that we've got a problem. See, sin separates us from God and requires a punishment. And that punishment for sin is being separated from God in a fiery place called hell. The people of Israel had a punishment of fiery serpents. The people asked Moses to pray for them and he did. And God told Moses to make a fiery serpent out of bronze and then to put it on a pole. And he said that everyone who was bitten could look at the serpent on the pole and they would see it and then they would live. So Moses made that bronze serpent and set it on a pole. And if the serpents bit anyone, they could look at the bronze serpent and then they would live. God provided a way for them to be saved. If they believed God and looked at the bronze serpent, they could be healed. God tells us about this event in Israel's history because something very similar to it would happen in the future. About 1,400 years later, someone else would be lifted up so others could be saved. Jesus told a man in John 3, 14 through 15, he said, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. See, Jesus was lifted up and died on a cross so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. Jesus took our punishment on the cross, and he is the way God provided that we could be saved. The way the Israelites were saved from the fiery serpents was by looking on the bronze serpent. The way we are saved from the fiery punishment of hell is by believing in Jesus on the cross. Jesus himself tells us in John 3:16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. 